Trigonistas! Welcome to another episode of Trigoneo, a vlog tutorial catering to your trigonometry needs. I am Shane Liamas, one of your Trigoneo instructors who will be discussing the six circular functions. At the end of this vlog tutorial, you Trigonistas can do dids. D-I-D-S. First, define the six circular functions. Second, identify the six circular functions. Third, determine the six circular function values of a given angle or radian. And fourth, solve word problems involving the six circular functions. Are you now ready to unlock the six circular functions? Great! Get your paper and pen ready because it is now time to dive into another trigonal lesson. Back in junior high school, you were actually oriented with the six circular functions. However, way back then, it was introduced as the six trigonometric functions and was only used on acute angles. But this time, we now paraphrase that concept into the six circular functions and apply its definitions and conditions on non-acute and even negative angles. In the unit circle where theta is an angle at a standard position and point P is the point of intersection of the terminal side of theta and the unit circle, we define six useful circular functions. First, the sine function, where sine theta equals to y. Second, the cosine function, where cosine theta equals to x. Third, the tangent function, where tangent theta equals to y divided by x. Fourth, the cosecant function, where cosecant theta equals to 1 divided by y. Fifth, the secant function, where secant theta equals to 1 divided by x. And lastly, the cotangent function, where cotangent theta equals to x divided by y. Note that the denominators of the tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent functions should not be equal to 0. Before we proceed on solving for the six circular functions, let us first have a quick triangularity check. In trigonometry, an angle contains an initial and terminating side after it is formed from a rotating ray on the Cartesian plane. To easily understand this concept, the initial side is the resting arm of the angle, while the terminating side is the moving arm. Meanwhile, we define an angle at standard position if its vertex is at the origin and the initial side is on the positive x-axis of the Cartesian plane. So, are we now clear on the definition of the six circular functions? Excellent! Let us now proceed to the steps on how to solve for the six circular function values of a given angle or radian. Always bear in mind that as long as you are given any of the values of the circular functions, you can easily solve for all the six values. We must consider the two essential steps to arrive at all six circular function values in the solving process. The first step is to determine the coordinates of the point at a given angle or radian using the unit circle. Once done, you can then solve for the six circular function values by substituting the corresponding values through the identified coordinates. To delve into examples, applications, and real-world scenarios of the problem-solving process involving the six circular functions, let's hear more from Christian, one of our Trigoneo instructors. Take it away, Christian! Thanks, Shane! Hello, everybody! I am Christian Agustin, one of your Trigoneo instructors for this video. And we will be going deeper into how the six circular functions are solved through examples and where we can see them in our real life settings. When drawn on the Cartesian plane, the different constellations of the Milky Way galaxy have corresponding coordinates with the solar system as the origin. Using the illustration as a guide, determine the six circular function values of the constellation Cassiopeia. To recap, Shane mentioned that the first step in solving for the six circular function values is to determine the coordinates of the point of intersection. Based on the illustration, Cassiopeia is at 120 degrees, thus 120 degrees or 2 pi over 3 has coordinates of negative 1 half and positive square root of 3 over 2. Now that we have our coordinates, we can now solve for the six circular function values by substituting the coordinates on their respective variables. 
First, let us start with sine theta. Since sine theta equals to y and y in our set of coordinates, square root of 3 over 2, sine theta is equal to square root of 3 over 2. Next, let us find the cosine theta. Since cosine theta is equal to x and x in our coordinate, is negative 1 half. Therefore, cosine theta is equal to negative 1 half. We then proceed to tangent theta. All we have to do is divide y by x. So, square root of 3 over 2 divided by negative 1 half. Apply the operational rules and cancel 2. Our tangent theta is negative square root of 3. Let's now look for cosecant theta. Cosecant theta is 1 divided by y. Therefore, 1 divided by the square root of 3 over 2. Rationalize the denominator. We have 2 square root of 3 divided by 3. For the second theta, we have to divide 1 by x. Thus, 1 divided by negative 1 half, we have negative 2. And that is basically our second theta. Lastly, for the cotangent theta, we have to divide x by y. That becomes negative 1 half divided by square root of 3 over 2. Apply the operational rules and rationalize the denominator. We have negative square root of 3 over 3. At this point, we have completed and solved the six circular function values of Cassiopeia. To recap, our sine theta is square root of 3 over 2, our cosine theta is negative 1 half, our tangent theta is negative square root of 3, our cosine theta is 2 square root of 3 divided by 3, our second theta is negative 2, and lastly, our cotangent theta is negative square root of 3 over 3. The six regular functions are applicable in many real-world scenarios. Interests such as astronomy, navigation, robotics, optics, and computer graphics are notable examples of today's lessons seen outside the classroom. Our example earlier was an application of constellation and navigation in astronomy. Now, it's your turn. Solve for the six circular function values of the given problem flashed on the screen. Feel free to pause this video as you solve it and see the answers afterward. And that's all from me. Let us go back to Shane to wrap up today's vlog tutorial. Thanks, Christian. But before we will end today's episode, here is a recap of the three essential lessons we have learned today. First, the six circular function comprises of sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Each circular function has a corresponding expression we have to use to obtain its value. Second, as long as you can determine and have the coordinates of any given radian or angle, you can solve for all the six circular function values. All you need to do is substitute the coordinates value onto the respective variables and employ mathematical operations when necessary. Third, the six circular functions are applicable in some real-world examples. This includes astronomy, navigation, optics, robotics, and even computer graphics. And then that is all for today's Trigo Neo vlog tutorial. We hope you learned a lot about the six circular functions and made your trigonometric life easier. Once again, this has been your Trigonio instructor, Shane Liamas, with Christian Agustin, saying Trigonio is only one vlogtorial way for every Trigonista. And ad mayorem de gloria.